Hello, my beautiful friends, it's Amanda here, and today we're talking about the best palettes of 2023. This is the second part of my best of the year series. I do this at the end of the year, every year. I'm sharing my favorite new products that I discovered over the course of 2023. Most of these things were released within the calendar year of 2023, but not all. Some things were around the year or so before but I just didn't have the chance to try them until 2023. This is just my recent best of the best, and especially for the palettes, I really try to keep it within the calendar year. I'm sharing my top 12 palettes, except, of course, I found a way to kind of cheat and add in extra palettes because of who I am as a person. I always find a way to do that, especially when it comes to palettes. But this is my top 12 palettes of the year. This list is very dominated by indie brands. I just feel like the indie brands killed it this year. This list used to be very dominated by ColourPop palettes. And this year, there's only one ColourPop palette in my top 12. There are two mainstream high-end brand palettes and one ColourPop palette and everything else is indie. <laughs> I'm going to show you close-ups, swatches. I'm going to tell you a little bit about why I chose each one of these as my favorites. But just a reminder that I have done swatch review tutorial comparison for every single palette that I'm talking about in today's video. Some of these have multiple videos. I will link every single relevant video that I can think of in the description box so that you can see more information from me that exists elsewhere on the channel. Since I've already reviewed these, I don't want to keep going over the same info over and over again, especially for those of you who are regular viewers. But rest assured, if you want to know more about any of these palettes, I will have more info for you. Just check the description box. I'll do my best to provide for you. I'm going to do this ranking style, but I'm going to start with my cheat palette in spot number 12, even though technically this should be in number one for me, but I just, I don't quite, I don't quite feel like it's right. And here's why, because my collaboration is part of this palette collection. This is the Perfect World palette collection. So my Flora Story palette, along with Lauren May Beauty's Sea Talk palette and Betty Jean's Planet Spirit palette all together need to be in my best of the year. This project, it's so special to me. I think it would be weird if this wasn't in my favorites because I put so much of my self into this palette and I really, I worked hard to make something that I felt was special and beautiful and useful and lovely. And I really love it. I really feel like each one of us accomplished that. And I think we each really created something that's special and genuine and true to ourselves. And these work beautifully together. I love them. I love my collab sisters. I'm so happy that this turned out the way that it did. And this is number one in my heart. It's number 12 in my ranking, but it's number one in my heart. Just know that. But I would feel like a big giant jerk if I put my own palette as number one. I don't know if that would come across the right way, but just know I do think it's great. Not in a conceited way, just in a way that it turned out even better than I envisioned it. These three work just beautifully together. This counts as one palette to me. Even though I love and appreciate each one of these individually as well, I just always think of this trio as one entity. So let's start with number 12, the Perfect World Collection. The Perfect World Collection, at least at the time I'm filming this, is still available on the Odin's Eye site. However, all three of these palettes are now currently listed as low stock. I don't know how much longer they'll last, but at least for right now, they are still available, all three of these. The Planet Spirit palette is really bright, bold, pigmented. The Planet Spirit palette stands on its own 
absolutely beautifully, especially if you're looking for something, like I said, more bold, more colorful. However, I think that the Planet Spirit palette also lends a lot to the other two palettes in the collection, Sea Talk and Flora Story. It can really lend some pop of color type of effect. So Sea Talk has a little bit of this yellowy chartreuse color, a little bit of pink, and you can use these more bold iterations of those colors from Planet Spirit with Sea Talk to really brighten it up and make a more bold look. Planet Spirit also has purple and green in a more bold way than Flora Story does. So these palettes can all just work together to really create a completely new color story by mixing and matching the shades. That's why I wanted to really talk about all three of these. I think they work beautifully independent of each other. Obviously, the shades in the Sea Talk palette lend a little bit more of a neutral vibe than Planet Spirit, but it's also giving some real richness, some options as far as cool tones and warm tones. Perhaps it's just because I am so close to this project, being one of the collaborators, but as much as I love these three palettes individually, and I think they have a compelling story to tell on their own, I find that they are the most fun to use to, in conjunction with one another, either all three palettes together or any two of these paired up can just create a whole new spin on the existing color stories. I cannot separate these three palettes in my mind. Of course, I love Flora Story. I really poured my heart and soul into it and I'm incredibly happy with how it turned out but I think I love it even more in the context of this Perfect World collection. And I'm just so, so happy. I don't want to gush about it anymore. I kind of do, but I'm not going to. I'm going to move on to my number 11 palette. This was a new to me brand this year. This is from Wicked Widow. It's the Graveyard Smash palette. This is a nice, compact, small palette. The color story has so much to offer from just eight shades. We have neutrals, we have bright, bold shades. There's light, medium, and deep. There's a great balance of mattes and shimmers. I love a 50-50 split. And there is not one single dud in this palette. All of these shades perform so beautifully. The metallics are really, really bright and intense. The mattes are super pigmented, but soft and blendable. Everything wears really well. And this is an interesting, cute little color story. I feel like I can get so many different eye looks from these eight shades. And I don't always feel that way about these smaller, more compact color stories. So this was a real revelation for me. I'm going to have my eye on the brand in 2024 for sure. Now in spot number 10 is the one ColourPop palette that I have on my list this year. This is the For Love and Justice palette. This is a collaboration with Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon. The second spin with a Sailor Moon collaboration. In my opinion, I like this one a lot better than the first one. The first one didn't do too much for me personally. As far as formula and color story, it just wasn't really hitting the right marks for what I want out of a palette. But this one definitely has. This is also interesting because I typically don't go for color stories that are very light color heavy and have a lot of blue features. And this has both of those. There are a lot of very light, more pastel and white based shades in here. Not a lot of mid-tones, not a lot of depth, and we have a little couple of blue shades in here, which is not my personal favorite eyeshadow color to wear, but somehow this combination works well for me. It's interesting without being overwhelming. Everything makes sense together. This is a great companion palette in my opinion. I find myself mixing this with lots of other palettes and I find that it just brings something very different to my personal collection that I appreciate. And the more that I've used this palette, the more and more I enjoy it and feel inspired by it. 
And I try a lot of palettes. So when something sticks in my brain and stays kind of surprising me and I keep wanting to pull it out, that's pretty significant to me. So this one really made an impact. It was unexpected. And I do think that it was ColourPop's best palette of the year, at least for me this year. In spot number nine, we have one of the holiday releases from Odin's Eye. They came out with Hey Reindeer and Snow Dream as their new palettes for 2023 holiday. And Snow Dream is the one I've used a lot more. I traveled with this one. This is another palette that has an even split between mattes and shimmers, which I am very drawn towards. This also has a great mix of neutrals and some of my favorite types of colors. There's a gorgeous holographic silver shade in here. We have some purple. We have some green. There are some more neutral undertone type of shades. There are some warmer shades. And everything in here works together in a way that really makes sense in my brain and lends itself towards the types of looks I like to do. The only shade that I could live without is this minty pastel green type of color. That's just not the type of shade I'm drawn towards, nor do I think that it really looks great on me. But in general, this is a palette that I've reached for a lot. It was very reliable when I was traveling and I knew that I wanted a variety of looks, but I didn't want to bring a whole ton of palettes. This is a reliable formula that I love, shades that I'm comfortable with but are still exciting. In the number eight spot, I have the Royal Europe palette from Nomad Cosmetics. Now, when this palette came out and I reviewed it, I thought for sure this is going to be my favorite nomad palette of all time it isn't even the highest ranking nomad palette in this video today i think you all know what, what i'm getting at here but this is a beautiful rich jewel toned color story the matte shades are buttery and intense and incredibly true to color when applied to the skin. All of the shimmers here are duochrome or multichrome in nature. So there's just an incredible dynamic metallic look that comes out of using any of these shimmers. I am a jewel tone lover. I do feel drawn towards these type of colors just personally as an aesthetic, but I also think that they're very flattering on me as far as my skin tone, eye color, hair color, all of that goes. So this is an easy layup type of color story for me. I always know I'm going to enjoy using these shadow formulas and colors. In spot number seven is the Resurgence palette. This is Heather Austin's collaboration with Unearthly Cosmetics. And this whole theme from the packaging, the color story, the finishes, the textures, everything just feels so intentional. Nothing feels like a throwaway. Nothing feels overworked. I can't explain how difficult it is to create something that feels unique, that feels true to yourself as a collaborator and to also make it appeal to a lot of people it's just such a difficult balance to strike and this resurgence palette does it so well I really like the styling of unearthly palettes in general I like the artwork I like the feel of the palettes the heft of the palettes I love the performance of these really bright matte pigmented shades it's tough to find a good solid opaque true matte red or neon green and these just do it so effortlessly when I first used this palette I liked it and the more I used it I fell more and more in love with it I am a person that I really like to mix my different shades together and these matte shades lend themselves to mixing so well I could go on and on about this. I know I've raved about it previously in other videos, so I'm going to try to keep it to the point here, but Resurgence, definitely 
stole my heart. I knew I was going to like it. Didn't know I was going to love it as much as I do. Now let's talk about the number six palette in my lineup. This is the Midnight Serenade palette from Lethal Cosmetics. This is the palette that I've had for the least amount of time of everything that you're seeing in today's ranking video. However, this was an instant love for me. The color story is just something that appeals to me personally. I like the artwork, I like the theming, but when it comes to these grungy neutrals meets grungy jewel tones, I really love this. The only thing I would change is I think some of these rosy reddish purple matte shades are a little bit too similar to one another. I would have liked a little bit more variety in the matte shades. And if that had happened, I can guarantee you this palette would have made it even higher up, potentially even top one or two type of spots because the formulas are spot on. This is a really, really fun palette to use. It's deceptively complex. I think if you just glance at this, you think, oh, it's like kind of a neutral palette or whatever. But the more that I mix and layer these shades, the more I discover how much I really like this. Maybe I, maybe it's just a me thing, but I click with this palette. I just have chemistry with it. Maybe I can't explain it properly, but it really works for me and my style. In spot number five is the Too Faced Italian Spritz palette. This was another one. I didn't have very high hopes. I haven't had a ton of luck with Too Faced palettes over the past couple of years. This palette is just completely different. We're back in the tin packaging, which is a nostalgic type of joy for me. But all of that aside, the formulas on these shadows are legitimately so good. The metallics in here are thick and foily and they wear forever. They just have that really dense, bright metallic finish that I personally enjoy. The mattes are soft and blend and layer beautifully. And I'm just wondering why is every Too Faced palette not like this one? Because this one is a head and shoulders above anything they've released in probably three years or more. The color story is fun. There's a lot of different shades in here. You can do an easy neutral. You can do something bold, sultry, smoky, cutesy, romantic. This is another one that I've traveled with a lot. As far as warm toned looks go, this was my go-to for basically the entire year, because this came out in the springtime, I have been loyally going back to this palette. Even if I just want a quick two or three shadow look, this has been a reliable favorite for me. Now, let's move on to palette number four. This is the Fighter palette from Fantasy Cosmetica. This is a perfect representation of what I think Fantasy Cosmetica does really well, which is curating color stories that make sense and making a neutral palette in this day and age is not an easy thing to do to execute it perfectly is really the only choice that brands have right now and this is interesting it has a bit of a twist it has a bit of color it's got warm tones it's got cool tones it has as usual for the brand very, very reliable formulas. We have a little bit of shiftiness, a little bit of sparkliness. Fantasy Cosmetica came out of the gate with their debut palette being my number one palette last year, and they are still going strong. They're still creating intentional color stories with exceptionally good formulas, and I am always waiting to see what's next from them. This is an exciting brand, one to watch over the next year for sure. We're broken into the top three now in the bronze medal spot on the podium. We have the Maneater Nightfall palette from Tarte Cosmetics. The Maneater Nightfall palette has Again, a great distribution of mattes and shimmers. Here we also have a nice distribution of color story because the top half of the palette is a very warm, neutral 
type of block. And then the second half of the color story has some more color injected than last year's Maneater palette offering. And it definitely is giving me those rich jewel tone type of colors that I love. I love a purple. I love this foresty green dark matte shade. I like that we have a gunmetal silver and there's a little bit of something for any type of look I would ever want to do. Again, the formulas are just reliable, buttery, long wearing, easy to work with. This I knew was going to be one of my top palettes as soon as I opened it up and started swatching it and it's still standing the test of time here by the time we're ranking palettes. Now, for my number one and number two spots, I went back and forth. I was agonizing switching these to this was in the one spot and the number one was in the two spot. Basically, all of this explanation to say the top two palettes are very, very, very close for me. This Ghost Town USA palette just has an incredible variety. We have cool tones. We have neutrals, warm tones, colors. The pops of color in here are my favorite types of pops of color, namely purple and green. There are a couple of very beautiful silvery shades in here, Quicksilver and Smoky Quartz, which I love a metallic silver shadow. We've got half matte, half shimmer, light, medium, deep, my favorite types of colors. We have an even distribution all around of neutrals, colors, finishes, everything that I want out of a palette. This is giving me inside of interesting, fun, funky packaging that tells a story. I love the grunginess of this. I love the versatility of these shades, how easily they can all be used together, mixed and matched. The only reason why I ended up putting this in the number two spot instead of the number one spot is Two of the lighter mattes, the light green and the light blue, are a little bit more difficult for me to work with. They just are maybe too soft for me, too pastel for me. I don't know. They're just not my perfect shadows. But my number one palette has literally zero issues zero duds and those nomad shades aren't duds they just aren't my favorite type of shadow but this jewels and gem palette is giving me some similar type of talking points it has a little bit of purple a little bit of green a little bit of silver it has half matte half shimmer it has that sort of grungy offbeat neutral type of vibe but every single one of these shadows swatches, performs, wears, applies like a dream. I just love Odin's Eyes matte formula. It's my favorite type of matte shadow and I think everybody has different preferences when it comes to formulas. So what's best for me may not be best for you. I like these really silky, super pigmented, but still blendable type of mattes. And everything in this palette just works for me. I can do a one or two shadow look. I can do something really complex, something light, bright, bold, soft, neutral, colorful. It gives me everything I want and I am never disappointed. I never have any trouble other than deciding which shadows to wear. So that's why Jewels and Gem is my number one palette of the year. Now that you've seen my top 12 palettes ranked, I do want to show you a quick tutorial for the eye look that I'm wearing right now. I was also wearing the same look in my previous best of video. This is created with a combination of two of my top palettes of the year. I love unexpected palette combos. So I want to show you how I created this look that I'm wearing today using shades from the Fantasy Cosmetica Fighter palette and the ColourPop Pretty Guardians for Love and Justice palette. These two work so nicely together. I really love the way my eye look turned out, so I wanted to share that with you as well. As usual, I'm going to start with my favorite primer. This is the Matte Eye Primer from Ulta Beauty. 
I'm going back and forth between the Fighter and For Love and Justice palettes. So when I list the shade name that I'm working with, I will also list which palette it's from directly below the shade name, especially if you have these two and you want to try to work with them together. Definitely recommend it because the Fighter palette can lend a little bit of depth and just some different types of neutrals to the color story in the For Love and Justice palette. So I'm starting with Cavalier from the Fighter palette. This is a mid-tone gray and I'm just putting that into the crease a little bit and then I'm going to take this periwinkle matte shade called Her Destiny on a big big fluffy brush from Singe Beauty. I'm going to put that right on top and I'm going to sandwich the gray and the periwinkle together and really blend and blow out that shade so that I get this grayish version of the periwinkle color. This works a little bit better for my skin tone in my opinion. Then I'm taking a deep purple matte shade called Girl Power and I'm putting that on the very outer part of my eyelid and also blending that just a little bit into the crease. I don't want it to get too smoky so I'm trying to build that up very lightly. Once I applied that deeper purple matte shade I went back once again with the periwinkle color called Her Destiny and just re-blended everything together again to hopefully get a more seamless look on the lid before I start adding some metallic shades on top. I'm going to use my fingers to apply these metallic shades. That's my favorite way to go. I'm starting with this purpley warm duochrome color called Always There and I'm layering that sort of on top of the darker purple matte shade on the outer corner. Then I'm going to use this beautiful bluish silver called Blade from the Fighter palette and I'm really going to pack that all over most of the lid but concentrating on the center part of the lid so that really catches the eye and blends right into that shifty duochrome purple shade. I am going to add some more metallic accents but first I want to do a little bit of work on that lower lash line. So I combined this pink and purple from the Sailor Moon palette and smudged that really messy along the lower lash line and then I went back to the deep purple matte shade and smudged that just on the outer corners of my lash line to add a little bit of depth and definition to the lash line without actually using an eyeliner. Then I used the shade Glory. This is a more sheer shifty silvery blue duochrome. I put that on the very very inner part of the lid and also on the lower lash line just for a highlight to really emphasize and pop a little bit of that metallic. Then I curled my lashes, added some L'Oreal Telescopic Lift Mascara, and that's my finished look. I have a little bit of a cool toned silvery purple final product. It's really combining a lot of the things I loved from the palettes that made it to the top of my list shifty and shimmery bright metallics, some very easy to blend and layer mattes. And I like the idea of mixing and matching not only different eyeshadows to create my perfect shade, but mixing and matching different palettes to see how they work together creatively and formula wise. I love the way this turned out. Definitely going to be wearing this look again. That is it for my best of 2023 series. Just keep in mind that while I do try a lot of makeup, a lot, a lot, thousands of products every year, I still don't have the ability to try everything. So there are very likely a lot of great things out there, things that I would have loved and would have highly ranked that I just didn't get the chance to get my hands on. If there's anything like that that you think I'm really missing out on, I always love to hear your suggestions. I'd love to hear your favorites. So make sure you keep those coming down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Okay, I'm already not going to sleep. I'm up. Okay. I'm fine. Everything's fine. No. Dang it. I knew I was going to do that.
That was a lot of blah, blah, blah. Typical for me. <laughs> what, what, what was I saying? Oh boy, I've been filming for so long today. I'm going to lose my voice. <laughs> I need to clean up this beauty room needs to be my project for the end of the year because it got real crazy in here. <laughs> Once the holidays hit, things just started piling up and I was adding to the mess, but I was not detracting from it. So I definitely need to do some more decluttering. I'm in a perpetual state of needing to declutter. I already have a pack rat mentality, but then with the amount of comparisons that I do on my channel, I feel like I can't get rid of stuff because what if somebody wants to see a comparison with it? And that's not a great reason to hang on to a lot of this stuff. So I'm going to work on that. This cheek combo is real cute. Casually sweaty dreams. With a little silvery purple eye. Mm. Love it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shoot. I'm doing fine. I've dropped like 10 things over the course of filming this video. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. I'm fine. You know, everybody just likes different things. Everybody likes different things. That's okay. I like that about us as people. It keeps it interesting, you know? A survey of restaurant customers by British... Oh, okay, so it's a British survey. Found that an astounding 86% of Gen Z restaurant goers suffer from menu anxiety, prompted by, men by high prices, fair, and fear of not finding anything they like, and regretting what they ordered, scared to order their own food. Okay, oh my gosh. Gen Z babies, let me take you out to eat. It's really fun. The younger generation said they wouldn't go to a restaurant if they hadn't looked at a menu beforehand. What? And a third of Gen Zers also said they ask other people to order at restaurants because of this anxiety. Look, I'm the perfect friend for you. I am so good at ordering at restaurants. I'm really, really good at this. This is like a special skill. I never knew that other people would appreciate it. My husband always tells me that I'm good at ordering. Look. Gen Z friends, I will help you. FaceTime me and I will help you decide what to eat. Another source of anxiety is not being able to pronounce the options on the menu. Just Google it. That's what I do. That is wild to me. Look, I'm not, I don't want to be judgmental. I'm not judging. I just can't fathom that. But that's, I'm because of who I am as a person. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying that's how I am. I'm a very open-minded eater. I should put it that way. I love trying new restaurants, new foods, new recipes. I'm all about that life. But that's not for everybody. That's okay. I accept you. And I will order for you at a restaurant. Okay. You want to know why? I love your face. And I will see you soon. Okay. Love you. Bye.